Parents, what spooky past life memory did your kid daughter? My daughter talks about her grandson all the time, I thought it was just an imaginary friend. But then a couple nights ago she came out of her room at bedtime absolutely sobbing and said I'm sad because I miss my grandson, he lives in my old house in my old neighborhood, she has never lived anywhere other than this apartment. Ed I totally thought this would get buried, to answer some questions we have asked her about him, but it's pretty hit or miss on whether she lacks will a answer or just think it's a fun game. The other night after some questions she told us that he sleeps in a crib and has a white tongue. Comma but when I asked her his name a few hours ago she said get and laughter and laughed. It totally could be just her imagination. But she also told me some weird things about the baby I lost a few months ago. Which really makes me wonder if she remembers, knows things we don't. Not exactly the same thing. But my 5 year old daughter has been saying things like when I look in mirrors there are a lot of people in here, and why were so many people in my room last night? For like 2 years. When he was 3 my husband decided to treat our son to a flight over our city in a Cessna when it was time to get on the plane. Our boy climbed into the pilot's seat and was extremely upset when he was told he had to move. He began crying and saying he was sorry, he didn't mean to crash that plane last time and he said he'd be good this time. My husband managed to calm him by pointing out that his legs were too short for his feet to reach the pedals. Once he got settled in the back seat, he started fussing about not being able to use the radio, so the pilot got him a headset. Just didn't plug it in all the way. Our son then started trying to raise the tower so he could to his radio check and get clearance. At that point the pilot needed to take a break. He went for a smoke while my husband talked to our son, who told him that he crashed the last plane he flew and a lot of people died. When the pilot got back, they were able to do the flight with no further issues. About a year later, we went to an aeronautics museum when an old mosquito was being restored. Our son told the curator that he used to fly one of those. So he offered us a tour of the plane. When we got in, our son pointed out several things that were wrong with the plane, which turned out to be correct. Things like the joystick being the wrong sort, etc. The curator told us the plane had previously been modernized and was now being restored to original condition. He also confirmed that the items our son had pointed out were in fact slated to be replaced. Our kid has grown mo and doesn't remember ever being a pilot before and has absolute zero interest in planes, but he does remember just knowing things about airplanes and piloting them. Not me but a friend's little sister, the whole family was out for a dinner at a restaurant in a skiing village which they recently bought a cottage near. My friend's little sister as soon as they walked and said I know this place, my mother and I used to paint here. To which her mother replied we've never been here before, what do you mean? She replied with number, my mother from before, we used to paint here all the time. The family was obviously a little freaked out but didn't think much of it as she was pretty young and they figured just messing around. Later on though, when talking to the waitress, the little girl again adamantly mentioned how she used to paint there and the waitress revealed that it in fact was an art studio for many years in the 1900s but had been converted sometime in the early 2000s into a restaurant. Needless to say the entire table, waitress included got goosebumps and were at a loss for words. When I was about for my family and I were moving house, we went to view this house in a rural village that was right by an airfield that had been very important during WW2, and there were still disused Anderson shelters in the garden and fields behind. Apparently the minute I saw them I ran to my mom, clung to her arm and asked are there going to be more bombs? and got really agitated. Nobody ever spoke about the war. This was in the 90s, and we didn't even have a TV. My mom was really spooked by the whole thing. 
Anyone interested in this sort of thing should look up the WW2 US General George S. Patton. He allegedly attributes many of his victories throughout Europe to a familiarity with the battlefields, having fought on them countless times in past lives. I'm pretty sure there's a book about it. Edit. I found the book on Amazon. HTTPS colon slash slash www.amazon.com slash Patton Lives Battles General Reincarnation slash DP slash 148125743 question mark ref underscore equals D6K underscore app link underscore BB underscore marketplace. Obligatory not the parent but the kid here. Apparently used to have rather frequent bouts of nightmares back when I was four. And it always began with me screaming the name Sarah, then calling for help loudly, which would wake pretty much everyone in the house up, and ending with me just blubbering out I'm sorry, I'm so sorry over and over and over again. All the while crying and sobbing. When I would wake up in the morning, I'd have no recollection about any of this. My parents had no idea what caused it, given that they knew no one named Sarah that I had interacted with, we had no TV or anything of the sort. I hadn't begun going to preschool yet, and didn't know how to read beyond a few simple words. Nothing they did seemed able to stop it either. The whole thing went on for a good long while, almost a year, until one day, it just sort of stopped. Mom apparently tried asking me once about it, and Kid Me said something to the effect of, Sarah doesn't want to see me crying anymore, so I won't. Didn't actually know any of this happened until some years back when I got to talking to my parents about how I always found the name Sarah to be beautiful. My grandma has a story from when my dad was 2-3 years old. He told her once that he was almost born before but was too sick and died and had to come back later. Turns out my grandma had at least one miscarriage before he was born that was likely due to birth defects caused by a medication she had been taking at the time. I don't know how old I was but when I was young, 6, I was in the car with my parents and I said something like oh I used to live there while pointing at a house we were driving past. Turns out it was my great great grandmother's house. My daughter is about to turn 4 and talks about being in belly a lot. She recalls details and things I did while pregnant that I know I haven't told her or talked about. She talks about the day I rode the school bus to the mini town. I took my students on a field trip when I was nearly 9 months pregnant to a mini city play place. She tells me it was dark but she heard my heart and heard my voice. Aged 2 or 3 my daughter told us about when she and her other parents had to run away from their burning house, but not just their house, everything around them was on fire. They didn't escape. She also told us how warm and cozy it was in her mother's womb. My daughter is deathly afraid of fire because the fire at school killed my sister and my other mom was really sad. When she started preschool at 3 they had a fire drill and she cried hysterically until it was over and she was convinced there was no fire I had to go pick her up and on the way home she told me she's glad they have fire drills so all of the kids don't die like at her last school. I'm still freaked out. I was driving my family across the state to visit family. Some commercial on the radio about Vegas came on and I started singing Viva a uh, uh, Las Vegas in my best Elvis impersonation. My son was about 3-4 and he says I don't like Vegas. I lost my life and a lot of money there. His mom and I glanced at each other like WTF. He never said anything else about it. In 2006 my best friend Nick was Kia in Iraq. We used to wrestle, fight until one of us submitted. These sessions would start randomly and always be initiated by showing your fangs. This involved pointing your pointer and middle finger down in front of your mouth while growling at the other person. 
A couple of weeks after his death some family from the other side of the country that we only see every five years or so was visiting, my cousin's son who was about five and who I never met prior to this visit comes over, he gives me the fangs and smiles, I asked him where did you learn that, he says your friend says hi and runs away, I went to my room and cried for a bit. When he was around four. My grandson used to talk about his job at the ice factory. One day he was talking about his boss Farvo and the day he quit. I asked him why he quit and he turned to me and quite passionately said I'll tell you why I quit. They made me work 15 days in a row without a break and I had enough of that. It was weird hearing all that righteous anger coming out of that little boy. My daughter just informed me that he was three when he always talked about working at the ice factory. So yeah dot 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 scary three year olds. I had a brother passed away from brain cancer. At the time we had a cat who was a calico and just sort of knew he was battling something. She was really mean to most people but with him she was gentle. He would grab her paws and she would just let it happen. Well about three years after he passed my parents had another child, another boy. He was about three when he told my parents about the white, brown and black cat that used to let him grab her paws. She had died about a year before he was born. We named our son after my father who passed away three years before he was born. My father pumped gas at a local gas station for years. My son saw one of the oil trucks drive by one day and proceeded to talk about how he was pumping gas at the gas station. It weirded me right out cause we never talked about that before. He's only three years old. My daughter would refer to me as her new mommy. Then, as her vocabulary increased, she said you're my new mommy, but it's okay, I like you. Then one day, you're my new mommy, I had two brothers, but they all died, but it's okay BC I like you. She never mentioned her real family again, last time she did she was was about 3 or 4 years old. When my brother was about three back in the 90s our family was sitting down for dinner and he randomly said dad, remember when I lived in Spain? We're from the UK, and my dad humoring him said yeah. And he continued that he lived in Spain before with his other family but he died when he was on a fishing trip with his dad and the last thing he remembers is his dad's hand trying to reach him as he drowned. He almost reeled off some Spanish names for his parents which there was no way he would have known those kind of names and he started to sort of meditate in his room from time to time. He eventually stopped talking about it as he got a little older and doesn't remember anything about it anymore. Crazy to hear so many other people have similar experiences. My little brother when he was little, like 3 or 4, said that he was in the jungle saving animals and one day he had to decide if he would stay with the animals or come lived with us. He chose us, but reminded my mom that he couldn't stay forever, just for a little while. He passed this last January at 26 years old. Edit, I appreciate the love. Everyone make sure to say what you need to to those who need to hear it. I don't believe it's my place to tell the whole story, and I don't believe this is the forum, so I'll leave this as is. I also want to advocate for professional mental health for those who have experienced the loss of a child, sibling, parent etc. Don't figure it all out alone, go get help. My mom said when I was pretty young she was driving me to daycare before work and I told her, you should have called Derma last night before she died. This was an old co-worker she loved, turns out Termal had died that night. Mine said that he had a dream he was in heaven, or some other place before he was born, with lots of men in suits who had lined up every woman on the planet and the suits told him to pick who would be his mom. The part that creeped me out is I remember my mom telling me I had a dream exactly like that as a child. My son was three at the time. At bedtime he said mama, 
One time the bad guys got me and drove me in their car, and I said what, and he continued to tell me a story about being locked in a room and he was hungry and I didn't find him, the bad guys got away and he never got out, that s h. He scared me so much I still get freaked by it, I held him so right that night. When I was three I used to tell my mom stories about my other family every night before bed, the siblings I had and the dog too. One day she took me to Target and I told her I wanted big girl aunties and she said she would buy them for me and I could wear them when I was potty trained. I told her that my other family already potty trained me so I can start wearing them now. I put them on that day and never had an accident after that. She never potty trained me and was just shocked. I was at a nature show with my daughter, the kind where they bring animals out and tell the audience about them. This particular show was about wolves, and the handler was telling the audience why she did what she did with the wolves. My daughter, maybe four at the time, said I used to do that. I asked her what she meant. She said, just as factually as a four-year-old could possibly be, that she used to train dogs and wolves before she died. She herself looked confused for a bit, as though this thought was surprising to her as well. I didn't know what to say, so I said well that's interesting. She enjoyed the rest of the show and never spoke of it again. Ed, thank you for the award. Internet stranger, I'll be sure to pay it forward when I'm able. Not so much past life, when my son was about 4 we were driving to daycare he randomly pipes and says mommy I had this dream where you were pregnant. We named the baby Dawson, but then he fell off the bed and died. He wouldn't give me any more information than that. I was super weirded out. That evening I decided to get a couple pregnancy tests. And sure enough I was pregnant. Went through the next day and never mentioned anything to anyone. But the following day I woke up with cramps, ended up going to the hospital and found out I'd miscarried, still never said anything to anyone about it. A few days go by and we're driving to daycare and my son says remember that dream I had about the baby? That's silly because you're not pregnant. I was absolutely floored, it was so weird. When my son was four we had driven past the cemetery, he asked me if I remembered when he died and was buried. I said no and asked him what he meant by saying that. He said he had died, was buried in the cemetery and that's when he started growing in my belly. The hairs on the back of my neck stood up when he said this. He doesn't remember say this. My middle son, five is named after my wife's grandfather. He just looked at her a couple of weeks ago and said I remember when you were little and you sat on my lap. He almost so once gazed into my mother-in-law's eyes, at three, four years old, stroked her cheek and said my daughter. Not a parent but I miscarried at 19. It was a deeply traumatic time in my life. I was far along enough to know it would have been a girl. I had nightmares about the little girl I lost. Years later a toddler comes running right up into my arms saying she was really good friends with Naomi and that she's completely fine and looks good and she's sorry she just wasn't ready yet. It terrified me because I never told anyone about the name I would have given my daughter. Her parents said there's no one in her daycare named Naomi so it must have been an imaginary friend. I don't have kids but when my brother was a toddler he said something to my mom about throwing hay in the window for the horses. My grandfather died before his birth and was a farmer. The barn had windows and he would just throw the hay in the windows for the horses to eat. My mom was really freaked out but he never said anything else similar again. My parents don't use Reddit so I'll answer this for them. I think I was three playing with a corkscrew when I blurted out that I used to have one of these when I had black hair. I'm blonde. My parents said they asked me what it was and I responded that it's used for opening wine. Freaked the hell out of them. So this is mine. I had a baby doll as a kid, two three years old. 
and named her after a family surname that's French and vaguely feminine, and definitely not something a British kid would usually come up with. Problem was use of that particular family name traces back before even my great-grandparents, when it was lost to a paternal surname, and so was never mentioned in my house. The family tree wasn't even being worked on at the time, I still wonder about it. When my daughter was about three years old she would say the word specs all the time dot 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 like constantly. I'm thinking this is so bizarre why would a child randomly start saying this. Then my wife told me that her grandfather used to work for a company called Specs. The grandfather has been deceased quite a long time and was never even alive since my daughter was born. She used to say things to me all the time like when I was an adult I used to do ziz. Oh, 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 oh,